To solve the following system of equations, we're going to need to either use the elimination method or the substitution method. In this case, the elimination method is going to be much faster and much more efficient than the substitution method, but I'll start by showing you substitution just so you can see why I don't recommend it. When you're looking for a variable to isolate for substitution, um, I would recommend looking at what kind of thinking ahead to what the problem will become once you divide everything by the coefficient in front of that variable that you're trying to isolate. So let's say we're trying to isolate x. That means we're going to have to divide everything in this equation by 3. That's always the final step, right? And so we would end up with x is equal to 6 divided by 3 is 2y and then minus 4 over 3. So in this case, this is the best case scenario for the substitution method. You only have one fraction to deal with, but still fractions do tend to bog down um, your computation time. So it is just going to take longer to process all of that math. For the second equation, whether you divide by 5 to isolate that x or whether you divide by 8 to isolate the y, you are going to end up every single one except for the, the one you divide, this uh, variable that you isolate will be a fraction. So you'll have twice as many fractions as you would with the first equation. Either way, not ideal compared to the elimination method, which I'll show you now. For this elimination method, I would recommend getting your x's to have matching coefficients. So we'll multiply by the greatest common factor of 5 up here and 3 down here. So our first equation is going to look like 3x times 5 is 15x. 6y times 5 would be plus, or excuse me, equals a positive 31. And then negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. Then for our next one, we have 5x times 3 is 15x is equal to 8y times 3, which is 24y, minus 6 times 3, which is 18. Then we just need the signs of these two variables to be opposite. So we'll go ahead and flip all of our signs of the second equation as if we multiplied everything by a negative 1. And now we can go ahead and combine. These will cancel because they are complete opposites. 30y plus a negative 24y, or in this case just subtracting the 2, will be 6y. And then negative 20 plus 18 will give us a negative 2. And that is equal to these canceled each other out, leaving behind just 0. Now if we want to work on isolating this y, we'll need to add 2 to both sides. These will cancel, leaving us with 2 is equal to 6y. And since 6 is being multiplied to y, the opposite operation here is division. These will cancel, leaving us with 2 over 6 is equal to y, or in its simplest form, we divide the top and bottom by 2, and we're left with 1 third is equal to y, or the decimal 0 0.333 repeating. And that only matches answer choice A. It is the only one that has a positive 0 0.333 as its uh, y value, and so that makes it our correct answer. At that point, you can mark it and move on with the rest of the test, but for the sake of the video, I'll show you how they found the x value as well. To find our x value, we're going to need to plug in this value of 1 third into one of those equations, and I would recommend doing it to that first equation because 6 will be able to simplify. Once we multiply it to that 1 third, we'll be able to simplify it down. Let me grab a different color. There we go. Okay, so we're going to take our first equation, 3x equals 6y minus 4, and we're going to plug in 1 third for y. 3x is equal to 6 times 1 third minus 4. That will give us 3x is equal to 6 times 1 is 6, and then we just keep the same denominator of 3 minus 4. And in this case, again, this is why I recommended this equation, 6 can be evenly divided by 3. So we will get a whole number. 3x is equal to 6 divided by 3 is 2. Then when we do this subtraction, 2 minus 4 will give us negative 2. And the last step is to divide both sides by 3, giving us x is equal to negative 2 thirds, or the decimal negative 0. 0.667, also matching answer choice A.